but is made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Monday to everybody. Thank God for the first day of another work week. And I hope that you're doing well. Again, let me greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. All right, so won't you come on, won't you come on. I'm glad to see you on this Monday that God has allowed us to see. I trust that you had a wonderful weekend. Let me, Salem, take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to you. Um, first of all, I want to thank you on behalf of Brother Ronald Bertrand, who lost his father, and those homegoing services were on Saturday at the French Speaking Baptist Church at 209 Claremont Avenue. You were there. You showed love and support. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you also for supporting our fish fry that was given by the JAT Club on this past Saturday. It was good to see some of you and just to come together and to fellowship. And then on Sunday, what a wonderful worship experience we had as we um, celebrated our college students who are going back to um, school and we were able to give out scholarships. We gave over $20,000 in scholarships. This could not happen without your support. So thank you so, so very much. So upcoming events, uh, please meet me on Wednesday. We will resume our Bible study on this Wednesday at seven o'clock. Uh, my secretary will send you the prompts. The prompts are the same. If you have them from the last time, they are the same, but we'll see that you get them. It's time for us to come back together um, but I know that you have been reading and studying and doing your own devotional um, studies during the time that we have been away. But I long to see, as Paul writes to the church at Rome, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end, that I may be established, as that we may be confident together by the mutual faith of both you and me. So join us for our Bible study on this Wednesday. On this Saturday, we're having a Stop the Balance campaign is actually being sponsored by the 70th Precinct Interfaith Clergy Council right here at the church, where we will attempt to partner with the community to let them know that we care and what we need to do as a community to keep each other safe. So I hope that you will join us. And that event will be from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. I'm the newly elected president of the 7th Precinct Interfaith Clergy Council. And certainly, I'd love to see you. I'm desirous of your support because the church must not just be the church inside, but we must also be the church outside, letting people know that Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. All right, let me go ahead and greet some of you. Glad to see you on this Monday. And I have a new series that we're gonna start today that I'm gonna share with you in just a few minutes. Good to see you, Sister Mary Joseph, Sister Thelma Phillips, how are you? Sister Ruby Ramsey, Sister Deborah Dunham, I hope you had a wonderful trip. And I hope you're back safely. Sister Phyllis Laria, Leroy, how are you? Virginia Chena, my good friend Pat Franklin, how are you? I'm going to give you a holler. Sister Terry, you're always there. Thank you for your support. Coral Powell, um, Natalie Brian Crawford, thank you so much. Um, Sister Jacqueline Wallace, how are you? Always good to see you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Sister Ann Hamid, how are you? Pauletta McGregor, how are you? Sister Marva Harding, Brenda, good to see Joan. How are you, Maxine? I know you had a birthday. Good to see all of you. Let's move to the word. I want to start a study and we'll go through the book of James, the book of James. And um, here's some notes on the book of James. So we're going to go through several chapters of this this week. Um, why read this book? If you're looking for practical ways to live as a Christian, this is the book. James shows that it's possible to believe the right thing, live the right thing, and do the right thing. All right. I believe that this book is written by the brother of Jesus. James was the brother, you know, Jesus had brothers and sisters. He became an early bishop in the church and was actually converted only after his brother was crucified buried and raised from the dead and sits on the right hand side of the father. We know that this book was written somewhere between um, 40 AD and 50 AD. So it's written while the church is very, very young. 
And what James does is gets down to the nitty gritty of how it is and what are some of the things that we need to do to live as a Christian. Let's go straight to it. Let's start at the beginning. We're going to start at chapter one, and we're going to go today through verses one through 12. We'll be in the book of James for the rest of this week. So let's join in and do this study together and let somebody know that they should join us as we study God's word together, because if we're going to make it through this world and certainly in this pandemic season is going to be through the word of God. The grass, fill, the grass fadeth and the flower, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God will stand forever. James, I'm reading from the New International Version. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. James writes the church had been scattered and James writes to them because he wants to keep the church together and he wants them to understand that they can make it if they keep their faith in God through Jesus Christ. And he lets us know that trials and temptations will come. And what a perilous time we find ourselves in in this pandemic season. And now we have a new variant, the Delta variant. We have vaccine hesitancy. We have people that are promoting that that's not true. And the church is in a perilous time. This is a perilous time for all of us, but it's also a fine time for the church to let our light so shine that men might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. James puts it this way. He says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. How is that? Because you see, um, joy is that inner strength that God gives you in spite of the trials and tribulations. To be happy is to be dependent upon what happens to you. But when you have God with you and for you, then he becomes your strength. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so he says, not that you should be happy about it, but he says, consider it pure joy that God is working with you because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. In other words, it's the trials and tribulation that makes us strong, that gives us a sense of perseverance, that allows us to know that we can have the stick to to make it. You know, when I work out in the gym and I'm going to be heading back to the gym, light weights don't give me more strength. But as I get through the light weights, it's the heavier weights that I lift that allows me to have stronger muscles. The same thing, it's the trials and temptations. You think about it. It's the trials and tribulations that have made you stronger, not really the joyous moments. You can appreciate the joyous moments because you've had the trials and tribulations. You know, if anybody been sick and God made you well, then you know the joy of being well. Anybody had trouble with your money and it got funny, but God somehow made a way out of no way, it helps you to appreciate. And you realize, oh, this pain was for a reason. And then he says, and we've been talking about this a great deal, and James picks it up here about how to have faith and have that faith mixed with wisdom. He says, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. In other words, if you want to know exactly how to get it right, then you ask God. It's not just the information. Information is fine, but wisdom is applying the information in the appropriate way. And then he says, you got to have faith. You got to believe. You can't have faith and not have faith. You can't be double-minded, double-dunged. He puts it this way. He says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. You got to believe that God can do what he can do. Now, faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
The one that comes to God must believe that he is and his reward of those that diligently seek him. And so you got to move forward in the strength and in the faith that God can do it. You know, I wake up every morning declaring this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I believe you got to believe there's going to be a good day and it will turn out to be a good day. You have to manifest it through faith. All right. Let's come to close now as we go through verses 9 through 12. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in high positions, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossoms falls and its beauty is destroyed. The same way the rich will fade away, even while they go about their bless their business. What is he saying? That sounds a little bit confusing, but let me just explain it to you very, very quickly. He says, first of all, we should be humble. And when God blesses you, be grateful. Take pride in the blessings of God. So it says, believers, believers in humble circumstances, take pride in high positions. As God elevates you, be happy about that. Don't be arrogant about it, but you can have pride. The rich should be humble and not think that they're so great just because they have means and push people down. Because he says that the wealth and the money and even education, that stuff will pass away. It will fade. And in the same way, he says, the rich will also fade as they go about their business. Because the only thing that is for sure is our relationship with God. I'm done now. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trials, having stood the test. That person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let's put it this way. Rewind, rewind, rewind. The race is not given to the swift, but well, the battle to the strong, but to those who hold out until the end. In other words, uh, you don't get a prize for starting the race. You don't get a prize for going halfway through the race, but you get the prize when you complete the race. Some of us give up too quickly. But I join the hymnologist. I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hands. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. Isaiah was right when he put it this way. In Isaiah chapter 40, has that not known? Has that not heard? The everlasting Father giveth power to the faint, that them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall be weary, and young men will utterly fall. But watch this. They that wait upon the Lord, they that persevere, they that will endure, will renew their strength. And they'll mount up with the wings of eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. God bless you. We'll continue tomorrow from verse 13 as we complete chapter one of the book of James. As James tries to give us some practical ways to walk with Jesus and be successful, even in the midst of turbulent times. Let's go to Lord in prayer. To God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth as we yet try to understand it. We give you thanks. Now, God, I pray for each person that's under the sound of my voice, those persons who thought it not robbery to spend this moment in prayer and study and in devotion with you. Pray that you meet us at the point of our needs because we don't come to tell you how big our problems are, but we tell our problems how big our God is. Thank you for the assurance that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Now, God, keep us in the center of your will. Grant us your peace that passes all understanding and help us, as your word says, to consider it joy when we face trials, because the testing of our faith will produce perseverance. And then, oh God, let the challenges, and as we learn to persevere, 
may it give us a sense of maturity to hold on to your unchanging hands. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, God bless you. I'm so glad to see you today. Um, some others have joined us since I was on. Let me see, um, Maxine, uh, Mary Joseph, Imogene Brown, we continue to pray for you. Thank you so much, Sister Beverly Ward. How are you, Sister Shirley Malloy? Thank you. Thank all of you. Know that I love you more than my limited vocabulary can express. And then please consider meeting us for our in-person worship services, which we have every Sunday. And it commences at 1045. We're normally out not later than 1215. We learned something in this pandemic that you don't have to be eternal to be effective. And we just simply come here out of God's word. We pray. We praise God. And then we give him the glory, our strength is renewed, and we go and let a dying world know that Jesus saves. God bless you. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out and you're down sitting in your uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I look to see you tomorrow.